This is the Citizen Link Report. If you find our insights helpful, would you support our video efforts? Your gift of $25 or more goes a long way. It covers the crew, lights, cameras, all that. Just click on Donate. Thanks from all of us. Religious freedom is being talked about at the Supreme Court, but it's also being talked about at local schools across America. We'll talk about the Day of Dialogue. This is the Citizen Link Report. I'm Stuart Shepard, along with my friend and colleague, Candy Cushman. Hi, Candy. Hi, Stuart. In just a few days, students across the country will be exercising their constitutional right to religious freedom and will be sharing biblical values on campus as part of something called the Day of Dialogue. Now, that event is sponsored by Focus on the Family, and Candy watched is over it. Tell us what will students be sharing that day? What's it about? Right. Well, this is a free speech event, like you said, across the nation for students in high school and college, and it's sponsored by Focus on the Family. And so what that means is that on Thursday, April 10th, in just a few days, like you said, there's going to be students that are going to be exercising their religious freedoms to bring a Christian perspective to the table when hot-button cultural issues like marriage, sexuality, identity, when these things are already being discussed in their school and a lot of times promoted and celebrated, um, this event is designed to carve out a safe place and an equal opportunity for Christian students to be able to share their biblical perspective in a loving, peaceful, and legal manner. And Focus is helping them out by giving them some ideas about how to share. Right. Well, this year we have a brand new resource. It's a student guide that you can download for free at dayofdialogue.com. You just go to the top of the website and look for the uh, free resource Start Now button. And so the student guide gives you a really fun visual infographic chart with a step-by-step -step guide on how to participate, how to start a day of dialogue in your school. Uh, because the whole idea is that it's student-led, student-organized. Focus sponsors it in that we provide free tools, free um, uh, no charge free speech tools for students. Uh, but they take these tools and lead the event in their school and do what they're going to do with it, put their own spin on it. Um, they're in charge of creating this in their school. And so we give them the tools and then they go for it and take the lead. Um, and so that's, that's how it's quite, kind of a, a see you at the poll free speech event style initiative across the nation. Okay, so student-led, student-run. Mm -hmm. uh, you've also provided some other resources in the form of videos. We want mm -hmm. to share one of those with you. This one helps students. It was done by students, for students. Helps them understand what some of the do's and don'ts are. Hi, I'm Connor. And I'm Sam. And we're public school students. And we're also brothers. We're going to show you some things to do and not to do on the Day of Dialogue. Just to paint the picture, I'm the one who always gets it right. And I'm the one who always gets it wrong. Just in this film, of course. What are you doing, Sam? I'm putting up the April 10th Day of Dialogue poster. Today is April 11th. <sighs> Young man, do you have permission to put up this poster? Uh, permission? Why, yes. School policy 1021 clearly states that you must notify school officials a week in advance. Remember, prepare in advance and notify school officials. And don't wait to the last minute like me. A charming Middle English alliterative poem. It's an adventure. It is brief and comic in tone. Focusing on a heroic spirit and a dream of the poet who wrote in West do be respectful of all instruction time and classroom time. And don't be disruptive like me. Why are you participating in this event? Is it because you're a mean Christian bigot? <laughs> Expect challenges, but respond with truth and grace. Hey, let's switch roles. Hey, why are you participating in this event? Is it because you're me, bigot? This is a school environment. We should be able to share our perspectives, right? Yeah, I guess so. I believe there's a God who loves us and who has the best plan for our relationships and sexuality. So even though it's religious freedom, it doesn't mean there aren't some rules that have to be followed. Right, I love where we ended on that video because it shows how they can expect uh, verbal challenges, but instead of getting angry or getting impatient, uh, just to reflect Christ in that, remain calm, um, and just to 
confidently yet calmly express your rights, that you have a right to have a free uh, exchange of ideas, that this is an academic freedom environment where different perspectives should be shared. So I love how the video gives do's and don'ts like that. And the student guide has a lot more resources like that, tips for students on how to have a successful event, a legal uh, section that explains their rights. It even has a, a free speech quiz that they can take and share online. And then, of course, the free speech tools, uh, like the downloadable T-shirt designs, posters, and the conversation card that we can talk about a little bit later. Now, those of us who've been out of school for a while, it's kind of hard for us to imagine what it's like to be on campus in these days. But uh, a student named Lauren put together a video to give us some insight of what it's like being on an American campus in this century. Yes, this is Lauren, and I'm a college student from Michigan. I just wanted to talk to you a little bit about my experience with Day of Silence and why Day of Dialogue is so beneficial for you. When I was in high school, there was no such thing as Day of Dialogue. So every year when Day of Silence came around, our school split between those who agreed with the promotion of homosexuality and those who disagreed. Those who participated in Day of Silence would either wear duct tape across their mouths or write Day of Silence on their hand. And a lot of those who disagreed would either make t-shirts that said make some noise, and they would often go up to Day of Silence participants, shaking noisemakers in their face. A lot of Christians I knew didn't know how to respond to the controversial day, so some chose to join the Day of Silence participants and protest against the bullying and harassment of homosexuals, whereas others joined the noisemakers to voice their disagreement with the promotion of homosexuality. As a leader of the Christian club at my school, I knew a lot of Christians with varying opinions, and I didn't know where I personally stood between the two extremes. So I don't agree with the promotion of homosexuality, but I also don't agree with the bullying and harassment of homosexuals. In the end, I decided that I didn't have to choose either approach, but instead I chose to live out my Christian faith as I would any other day by loving and respecting each individual. Day of Dialogue has the same viewpoint, to demonstrate the love of Christ to everyone, despite what they may believe. Ephesians 4.15 tells us to speak the truth in love, growing in every way more and more like Christ. I encourage you to express your faith in this way, loving and respecting all people while still speaking the truth. You do have a voice, and it's up to you to get the conversation started. Yeah, you know, that video just gives a great explanation of how students nowadays just feel kind of caught in between two extremes. On one hand, the culture is just telling them to just embrace everything, um, and they feel like they want to do a little pushback on the political correctness of the whole thing, but how do they do that yeah. in a loving, respectful way? Um, but then on the other hand, they don't like the name calling. They don't, they don't like the hatefulness uh, that they see directed toward people that are different. That's not Christian. Um, so this student, Lauren, is a good example of, of Christian students out there that are wondering, where do we stand? Where do we, as a Christian club, come in on this? And that's where I just love what Day of Dialogue does for these students because it gives them a great balanced way to have a civil dialogue, a balanced biblical perspective that communicates truth and grace, just like Christ models for us in the Bible. And so um, that's what Lauren's expressing there and encouraging other students with. And that's so important, especially when activists on the other side, uh, they, they tend to, and I've seen this done over and over again, lump everybody together as a name-calling bully. And anyone who disagrees, even politely, even thoughtfully, is then lumped in as a name-calling bully. That's not fair, it's not right, and it's not how we have conversations about important issues in America. Right. Having a different perspective, um, sharing a biblical perspective that you choose to follow the Bible for guidance on sexuality and relationships, that doesn't equate to being a bully. And in fact, as uh, Christians, Dave Dialogue makes clear that as Christians, students should be the first to stand up for hurting vulnerable people around them that are being harmed or being bullied. Now, one of the items that you, hand, that you provide for students to help them start the conversation or something you call conversation cards. Talk about those. Yeah, I love second. this. Um, this is the primary free speech tool for Day of Dialogue students. They can distribute the conversation card before and after class as long as they do so in a way that doesn't disrupt classroom instruction time. Um, but we've added a couple of new things this year on the card um, just to make it easier for students to interact and for it to really be a tool to get the conversation started. Yeah. Um, first of all, the, the card asks a really simple question. What do you think? What do you think if there's a God um, that really does care about every single student in that school? How does that change our lives and how we interact? Um, and then to help them, it has a video, a scan code to a video of an actual student just asking some basic questions. And of course that scan code is something you can essentially take a picture of with a smartphone and it will link you to a resource on the internet. And in this case, it's this video that the students will be seeing. Hi, you're probably watching this because somebody gave you a conversation card. They did that because they honestly care about you as a person. 
I'd like to share a few quick thoughts. Have you ever noticed that whenever topics come up on campus about gender identity, sexual orientation, or homosexuality, we're told we have to choose between two extremes? On one side, we're told we have to embrace it all and accept everything culture is telling us. On the other side, we often hear hateful, divisive language used. I don't think either of these are okay. I think that as students, there's a better way to approach dialogue. And that way is modeled for us by Jesus Christ in the Bible. Now, I know you've probably heard a lot about Jesus Christ, but I think he was more than just another religious figure. I think he is who he says he is. Jesus wasn't afraid to tell the truth, but he also spoke that truth in love. And he loved us so much that he was willing to die for us. Jesus died on the cross so that we could all have a relationship with God. In our culture, we hear a lot about sexuality and identity. But what if there's a bigger question behind all of those debates? What if that question is, what is our purpose here? And out of the answer to that flow our answers about sexual identity. I mean, if there really is a God and he really loves us enough to send his own son to reconcile us to him, what is our response to that? And if he gave us something written, like the Bible, how does that impact our day-to-day -day lives? I invite you to talk about this stuff with the person who gave you the conversation card. Now he does a great job of demonstrating the proper tone for this event because he's kind, but he's also strong. He really does, Stuart. I was so proud of him doing this, and he is one of the thousands of students that we interact with for this event that just give you a glimpse of the heart behind this event and the heart that the students have for sharing God's uh, grace and truth. And so if you want to come alongside thousands of students and empower them, more students like this one, to speak the truth in their classes, then I highly encourage you to go to dayofdialogue.com, look at the top right-hand corner of the website, and hit the free guide and download that immediately and share it with a student in your life. And don't wait because the event is April 10th. Very good. Candy, thanks for sharing today. Thank you, Stuart. And we will put a link to the uh, Day of Dialogue website in the text summary that goes along with this video. Uh, we always appreciate when you write to us. You may always mail us at uh, mail at citizenlink.com with your email. We enjoy your questions, your comments, your criticisms. We're open to all those. We do encourage you to pray for students who will be participating in this event coming up. Pray that their motivations would be the right ones. Pray that their conversations would be full of kindness, but also pray that when they're challenged, they would respond with the spirit of grace. And remember, stand tall and be heard.